Good morning, St. Bean. Good morning. A couple announcements to go over this morning. This Thursday, March 21st, we have bingo at 10.30 a.m. 
Everyone is welcome. I do understand not everyone will be there because some people are working that morning, but if you can come, please come. It's fine. I won't be able to be there. I won't. March 22nd, uh, that Friday, we're going to do our second game night at 6 p.m. Last time it went really, really well. Um, everyone, again, is invited, and it's really, really fun time. Uh, bring a game to share. Uh, that's what we did last time. You know, if you wanted to bring something you'd like to play with everybody else, it's really fun. I will bring that one game, a dice game. It's happening this time. Uh, March 28th, next Thursday, we will have a Mon Monday Thursday service at 6 p.m. March 29th will be Good Friday, and we will have the Stations of Peter. The sanctuary will be open from 10 to 6. It's a come and go as you please. Okay, March 31st uh, will be our sunrise service at 6.30 in the morning. There will be a breakfast potluck at 8.30, and worship will begin at 10, with no Sunday school that Sunday. April 1st, the office will be closed for Easter holiday. April 12th, United Women in Faith Night Circle Meeting will be held at 6.30 p.m. We're still working on a church cookbook. The United Women in Faith are putting together the cookbook to sell. We still need more help. Please give any recipes you wish to have included in uh, the cookbook. And the deadline for recipes is April 1st. Our Easter egg hunt will be the morning of Easter, March Oh, excuse me, morning of Easter fun, March 30th at 10 a.m. Donations of pre-filled eggs and pre-wrapped candy will be collected in baskets near each sanctuary entrance and in the kitchen. You can place an order for Easter lilies in honor of memory of your loved ones. The lilies will adorn our sanctuary on Easter morning. You may take your flowers home following the 10 a.m. worship service. Order slips are located at both sanctuary doors and will be accepted throughout the day. Please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew so we know that you are here to worship with us today. And then we have an announcement on come forth. We've not done a real good job announcing come forth this year. And that's a lot of, a lot of loose ends there. Oklahoma. Missouri, North Georgia, Maine, Alaska, coastal Alaska, Eastern Kentucky, where the Red Bird Mission is, Hawaii, New Mexico, Washington, North and South Carolina, Texas, Arizona, Mississippi, Indiana, California, Guam, Tennessee, Clarksville. What do all these places have in common? Disaster struck and Uncor was there. Um, think about the Saturday afternoon, December the 9th. Where were you? Think about it. I was at Sewing Circle at Emily Bellamy's house when all of a sudden all our phones started alarming, followed by the power going out. And we sat there in the dark for a few minutes and we decided, okay, we need for Dorothy to go into this bathroom because we can't get her down the stairs with a walker. And the safest place is downstairs. And so we put our plan in action, you know, and we started getting updates from people around the county that were, you know, tornadoes hit in North Clarksville. Um, so we hunted down. I don't know what you were doing. I don't know if you know anyone who suffered damage that day or lost. I know some of you in this congregation worked on helping clear debris the week after. There were 15 counties, including Montgomery, that were affected that day.
And as soon as Bishop Bill McElroy would make a request to Encore, a $10,000 solidarity grant was sent to our conference. Now, this was for immediate needs, things like motel vouchers, uh, gas cards, uh, things like that that could immediately give instant relief. Today, well, okay, tornadoes, wildfires, typhoons, flooding, hurricanes, gun violence. UNCOR responded to the gun violence in Maine because it affected so many families. Um, war. When disaster happens, the bishop of the conference that's affected makes a request for aid from UNCOR. And that immediate response is the $10,000 solidarity grant. After further assessment, major grants are then released for long-term recovery. And I know that, um, for example, in North Georgia, they had tornadoes that hit in late 22. They have gotten long-term grants in 23, and they're still doing recovery. That's just one example. In 2023, UNCOR responded to 111 different humanitarian crises. 252 grants were given to partners, not just in the United States, but around the world. Today, we celebrate UNCOR Day here at St. Vic. And I've used the word encore, assuming that you all know the Methodist alphabet, but in case you don't, encore, United Methodist Committee on Relief. It's not funded by the budget of the United Methodist Church. The only funding that encore gets for disaster relief is through offerings like the one we're going to take up today. And I'll throw this out. If you didn't come prepared today, put it in the plate next Sunday. We'll wait a, about a week or two before we send it in to the National Unfor Office. Um, if you're paying by putting a donation in by check, please make the check to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church, and then in big letters write for Unfor. If you want to put loose cash in the plate, put it in an envelope, mark it, big letters, UMCOR. <coughs> Churches around throughout Methodism, either last Sunday or this Sunday, are taking up an offering for UMCOR. So that because we're giving today, the funding will be there for the disaster that hits next week, next month. And there will be disasters and we will be there because we're going to make a donation ahead of time to be prepared to respond. So thank you, St. Lee, in advance. You're always generous. And we in Clarksville have been on the receiving end, unfortunately, twice. We, we know what it's like to deal with a tornado disaster. Thank you, Cynthia. It is often said, ooh, hey Rob, can I get turned down just a little bit? It is often said that the United Methodists are the first on the ground and the last to leave after a disaster. And so the donations we make to UMCOR, 100% of the money that is given to UMCOR goes to disaster relief. 100%. Every dollar that is given to UMCOR goes to aid in recovery from disasters. And 
that is very much a point of pride for an organization that does such good work that the, the UMCOR does. One additional announcement is that if you did not have a chance to have your directory picture taken in the last couple of weeks, Phyllis did bring her camera today, and so right after church you will have the opportunity to have your picture taken. Now, most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Why are you here? I am seeking God with my whole heart, with my entire mind, with the fire. I see it. You're in the right place. This is God's house. The door is open to you. Why are you here? I am seeking God with my whole heart, with my entire mind, with a fire burning in my bones. We see that in you. You're in the right place. This is God's house. The door is open to you. Let us worship God. I invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing together hymn number 390, Forgive Our Sins as We Forgive. Margaret will play through the entire song once and then we will join in singing.
teaching God, we want to learn your ways. We want to learn your ways of forgiveness. We want to learn the ways of grace. We want to learn your ways to love. That is part of why we return to your text week after week, because we are hungry to be more like you. So as we prepare to listen to your good word, calm the noise in our minds. Center our spirits to focus on you so that we might learn and hear what we have missed in this story before. God, we want to learn your ways. Meet us here. Speak your truth. Help us listen. Today's first reading can be found in Psalm 119, verses 9 through 16. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Word of God for the people of God. You may remain seated as we sing our next hymn, Love Your Neighbor and Forgive. Margaret will play through the tune once, and then we will join in singing. <laughs> next reading is found in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, Take one or two others along with you, 
so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one to be, oh, excuse me, let such a one to be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lo loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Teach me, by Reverend Sarah A. Speed. Teach me about the ways of the wind, about the ways of the world, about the ways of the heart. Teach me about the soft crook of my lover's arm and the way two souls can hold each other close. Teach me about forgiveness, about the language of I'm sorry, and the softness of sincerity. Teach me about abundance, about 70 times seven and all the days of my life. Teach me about joy, about its contagious weaving and its soul healing. <clears throat> Teach me about mercy, about open hands and deep breaths. Teach me about the dawn of time and the stars in the sky. Teach me what matters most. Teach me what is mine to do. Teach this achingly curious heart until I run out of questions or I run out of days. Teach me some melodious sonnet and I will have a life well lived. There is so much we have to learn. And sometimes we forget just how much we have to learn until we are trying to teach a new person the knowledge that we have long taken for granted. Things like not running into the road, how to wave and clap, how to be silly. And then we learn those things only to discover there are more things we have to learn. Algebra, grammar, chemistry, taxes and etiquette and meal prepping. And along the way, we learn about conflict and feeling our emotions and how to treat one another. And one of the best ways we learn those things, one of the best ways we learn in general, is when we make mistakes. Do 
The ability to learn from our mistakes, though, is rooted in the trust we have in loved ones to help us through those mistakes with love and grace. They help give us the navigational beacons of living in the world. And the reality of the world is that where two or more are gathered, it can be really hard to get along. <laughs> Luckily for us, Jesus is our ever-present teacher who presents us this living textbook of scripture that teaches us how to act in ways that invite ourselves and our neighbors, our community, our world into life abundant. In our text today, we hear Jesus offer a step-by-step -step guide to conflict resolution. First, go to the person that hurt you to address the pain that has been caused. If that works, great. If not, continue to page two. Next, take a friend so there is a witness to the conversation so that there is a level of accountability. If that works, great. If not, continue to page three. Finally, take it before the whole church. With these steps that Jesus is offering, he's offering this path of reconciliation and forgiveness. But forgiveness is tricky. And sometimes we struggle to talk about forgiveness. Sometimes we can only hear the voice in our head chiding, forgive and forget. Forgive and forget would make our lives so much easier. Unfortunately, the forgetting part is all but impossible and is also potentially harmful. In an interview with Sojourners, Mitchell Atencio interviews the womanist theology and clinical psychologist, Dr. Chaniqua Walker Barnes. As a professor of practical theology and pastoral care at Columbia Theological Seminary, she has seen people wrestle with scripture's call to forgiveness called to forgive those who have done them great harm. And as a clinician, she knows that forgiveness, and its opposite, unforgiveness, is not something we just decide, but is an ongoing process that is connected to our biology and our neurochemistry and our trauma history. And so in the interview, Dr. Walker Barnes is asked, how does clinical research affect how we should read the Bible's instruction to forgive? She replies, Christians often have a forgive and forget attitude. That is part of how I started talking about forgiveness clinically. Because I would have clients often who would say, I'm supposed to forgive and forget. And being a psychologist, I would think you can't. Unless you have a brain lesion or some other type of traumatic brain injury, you're not going to forget. And that's not what forgiveness is. But a lot of Christians have the mentality that forgiveness is this one and done thing. Fear, stress, and anger are signals that our body gives us that something is wrong. If somebody has harmed us, forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean forgetting that person might be harmful, especially if they're unrepentant, a predator, a predator, or abusive in any way. Forgiveness can be dangerous if it leads us to re-engage in relationship prematurely with somebody who is likely to harm us again. It's important that we remember that 
Forgiveness does not absolve us from accountability. There are consequences when harm is committed. As Thomas continues to sprint toward toddlerhood, Ryan and I have been thinking a lot about what discipline looks like for someone who is absolutely impossible to reason with. The result is me spending hours reading articles about logical consequences to actions. In 1985, Jane Nelson outlined the three R's for logical consequences. Consequences should be one, related to the behavior, two, respectful towards the child and not involve shame or blame, and three, reasonable in both the child's and parent's perspective. An example of a logical consequence would be if your child drew on the wall, they are instructed to clean up what they drew on the wall. There's an expectation that when a wrong is done, there will be steps taken to right that wrong and begin the work of reconciliation. So what do we do when we can't see the logical consequences to harm? How do we forgive when the other person is incapable of seeing the harm they have caused? Forgiveness is a deeply vulnerable experience because it requires us to fully engage with the harm that we have experienced. And this means that forgiveness is not a linear path. Forgiveness cannot be linear. It is not a one-size-fits-all process. Later in her conversation with Sojourners, Dr. Walker Barnes poses an important question to measure our understanding of forgiveness. She asks, have I intentionally worked on developing a forgiving disposition? If we understand forgiveness in a cyclical nature, then we are able to recognize that there, there are days when we feel great about the forgiveness we have offered. We feel healed from the pain that has been caused. But there will also be days where we feel like the wound has been split wide open again. So maybe that is what Jesus means when he says we should forgive 77 or 70 times 7 times. Maybe Jesus knew that forgiveness was more complex than just forgive and forget. Maybe Jesus knew that forgiveness would always be a process for us. Because we are painfully and beautifully human. And the good news is that Jesus continues to walk on this journey with us. The good news is that Jesus offers redemption. The good news is that where two or more are gathered, Christ is here with us. The good news is that Christ invites us into abundant life. The good news is that God's love is steadfast. The good news is that we experience the free and unconditional and unlimited grace of God. The good news is that sometimes we are the ones in need of forgiveness. And the good news is that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward to this morning.
Let us pray. O oh God, pour out your spirit upon these our gifts. Gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to further your kingdom, to aid when the disasters of the world strike, to be a reminder that the kingdom of God is here and now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. daughter of Sarah's co-worker. We have been praying for her for several months now. She has been in the NICU at Vanderbilt after being born early and was trying to gain weight and had a couple other setbacks. But we rejoice because Emberly is home. We rejoice because after many years of waiting, Robert has started his own mail route, which means his schedule gets more consistent, which means life becomes a little bit easier, and so we absolutely rejoice. Are there any others? Elness Ezel, who passed away last week, was Coralie Gibbs' sister, who passed away last year. Let us go to God in prayer. O 
holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. For the reminder that when we gather together, you are here with us. God, we give you thanks that you hear our prayers and know our needs. We give you thanks that you are with us in our times of deep grief and loss. And we give you thanks that you are with us in times of great joy and reunion. Oh God, we lift to you these our prayers. Prayers for hope. Prayers for peace. Prayers of rejoicing. Prayers for forgiveness. Oh God, we know there are times possibly even today, that we need to ask for your forgiveness. That sometimes, even our best of intentions fall short. That sometimes, the anger in our hearts is just too much. So God, we know that the moment we ask for forgiveness, you offer it freely. God, heal our hearts, heal our minds, open our souls to your spirit, so that we might remember and affirm and proclaim both our own belovedness and the belovedness of every person we meet. Remembering that we are all created in your own image, and you have called us good. So God, we pray these things and all things in your Son's holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 560, Help Us Accept Each Other.
fiction. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. You are called, you are blessed in both your ups and in your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Amen.